So far, in every single one of the 3D lighting videos that I've done on this channel in the last two and a half years, we have gotten the information about the surface normals of whatever we're drawing by the, um, by passing it into the shader as a vertex attribute. So when the 3D objects are loaded into the game, they come with 3D, um, vertex normal information. And that information gets stuck into the vertex buffer and, uh, gets passed to the shader when the vertex buffer is drawn. And... Some of you might appreciate knowing that there is actually a second way in which you can figure out normal information for a 3D object. And you can do it right there in the shader, on the spot, and you don't have to... You don't have to calculate it ahead of time, and you don't have to take up an extra 12 bytes for every vertex for every 3D object that you put in the game. That doesn't sound like much, but it is an entire third of the usual 36-byte vertex format, and if you have a lot of large models, it can add up pretty quickly. Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about calculating face normals in the fragment shader. So before I get started, a few limitations. I personally like calculating face normals of something in the fragment shader quite a lot, I prefer to do it whenever I can, but there's one, and if you're using Game Maker, kind of two limitations that you'll want to keep in mind when you do this. So the first one, and this is the biggest one, this is the main one, is that Calculating normals on a surface in the fragment shader will not work for smooth shaded objects. If you have something, if you have a, um, if you have something like one of these spheres and you want smooth shading on it, or if you have another uh, object with a rounded surface, I don't have any others in this demo, um, you will get faceted shading if you do this in the fragment shader. There is no way around this. You can't do smooth shading by what I'm about to show you. And the second sort of um, thing to note is that since we are using Game Maker, and because Game Maker just has certain qualities about it, uh, this will only work on Windows. This will only work on Windows-based platforms. Um, this will not, by default, work on OpenGL platforms such as, um, well, everything that isn't Windows in, as far as Game Maker is concerned. And some of us have discovered that it's technically possible to screw around in the runtime installation folder for Game Maker to get it to work on things like Linux and whatever, but it's generally speaking not worth doing that. So. Uh, this will rely on the uh, standard derivatives. This will rely on shader derivatives. I made a video on shader derivatives a few weeks ago, and if you have not seen that video already and you don't know what shader derivatives are, you might want to go and familiarize yourself before continuing. Otherwise, this is a pretty bog standard 3D scene. Uh, we have a bunch of vertex buffers and we are submitting them in the draw event. And I'm going to go into the, the basic 3D stuff shader. Uh, this is where all the fun stuff happens. Uh, right now, as I said, all of our uh, normal information is being supplied as a vertex attribute. But what if we, for example, just got rid of that? And what if I got rid of the v underscore world normal um, calculation? And what if I got rid of um, the varying? And uh, what if the uh, world normal here was just... Uh, we didn't have it through any of the means that we were used to having um, vertex normals in these videos so far. Uh, what if this was just, for example, I'll, for the sake of argument, I'll make it um, vec3 uh, world normal can be vec3, let's say 0, 0, 1. So if I run this, uh, we don't have any normal information to speak of um, in the shader anymore because I just got rid of it. If I run this, everything will be shaded in a somewhat uninteresting way. Um, I see in this case it's just none at all because the uh, all faces have the same normal information, so everything looks uh, like it's evenly lit. However, uh, if you enable the shader uh, derivatives extension, so that's going to be in OpenGL in a GLSL extension, um, GL OES D E R I V A T I V E S we can enable shader derivatives in OpenGL by doing this. If you're writing shaders in HLSL, these will just be part of the um, high-level shader. Let's try that again. If you're using the high-level shader language instead of the OpenGL shader language, then shader derivatives will be part of the language by default, and you don't have to enable them. Now, some of you may already be aware, and I've made videos on this in the past, that if you want to calculate the normal of a, of a triangle, all you really need are the uh, three positions of the, uh, the three vertices in space. And from there, you can calculate the edge vectors of, um, of the triangle from, from one vertex to another. And from there, you can take the cross product of two uh, different edges of that triangle, normalize it, and that will give you the surface normal of that triangle. And while we don't directly have access to the original three positions of the three uh, vertices uh, forming the triangle that we're drawing in the fragment shader, uh, we can use the shader derivatives. And um, if you're calculating the world space position, 
uh, for the fragment shader, which is something that's already very common to do. And you can use the shader derivatives on the world space position, and that will give you the uh, basically the, the slope of the triangle that we're currently drawing in 3D space. And from there, dfdx, dfdy will give you the edge vectors that you need, essentially. And you can take the cross product of those, normalize it, and uh, voila, you have, your, you have your face normal. So uh, just a quick refresher on the world space position. Uh, this is already being calculated in the shader from previous videos. Uh, it's not difficult to do. It's not currently being used for anything, but it does uh, come up a lot when you're doing things like point lights or spotlights. And it is simply the, produ the product of the input position, so the vertex uh, position in object space, multiplied by the, uh, the world matrix. And that will transform the vertex position into world space, and you can simply assign that to a varying, and you can um, access it in the fragment shader, interpolate it across the triangle every pixel that you're drawing. So, uh, let's say instead of uh, world normal equals that, we're going to uh, figure out a few, a few values, and then we're going to um, combine them together, and we're going to get the world normal. So the first is going to be, I'm going to call it vec3. Um, let's just call it dx, because I'm unimaginative. And that's going to be the result of dfdx on uh, v underscore world position. Um, second, I'm going to want the same thing, but on the y-axis, so that's going to be vec3. dy is going to be dfdx v underscore world position. And again, this will give you the gradient, basically the slope of uh, the triangle across the four the four pixels that we're drawing. And I should stress that this only gives you the um, this only gives you the slope of the surface that we're drawing. It does not give you the actual positions of the um, of the neighboring fragments. Uh, you can work that out if you need to, but as it turns out, we don't need to because when you're uh, when you're dealing with edges and, and vectors and normals, uh, you don't really care about positions in space. You just care about the direction that the vectors are going in. And from here, we can simply take the cross product of dx and dy, and that is going to give us a vector that is perpendicular to both dx and dy, uh, a vector that is at a 90 degree angle to the two edge vectors of the triangle, and that is our normal. And we should, however, normalize that if we want it to have a magnitude of one, uh, which is very helpful when it, comes to, um, when it comes to doing lighting calculations. So let's run this. And this is going to give us our, a 3D world, and something does not look quite right. And uh, this probably was obvious to everyone who wasn't me, but instead of taking dfdx twice, I need dfdx and dfty. Um, false start. Now when I run the game, you, we can see that we have lighting on our scene, and the lighting is going in the same direction as it was before. Uh, it's pointing vaguely in the direction that my camera is looking. Um, give or take, and everything looks approximately correct. If I go around to the back of these trees, uh, we have, um, um, like, you know, shade on the back of the trees. Uh, and if you look at the different, each of the different uh, triangles on each of the, uh, each of the 3D objects, you can see that they are correspondingly lit. Uh, as I mentioned, when it comes to the, um, objects that were, uh, were smoothly shaded, uh, we no longer have smooth shading on these spheres. And as I said, these are now, these now look faceted and uh, they have flat lighting on them, so if you want smooth shading on something, then um, shader normals are not really an option that you really can do anything useful with, unfortunately. But if you're doing anything remotely low poly like this, if you're doing anything remotely um, with, uh, with flat faceted shading, then using shader derivatives to calculate normals and, um, in the fragment shader are your friend. This calculation is extremely inexpensive uh, for a full explanation of exactly what DFDX and DFDY do and why they're so fast. Uh, see the previous video that I made on that. Uh, cross product is a pretty um, simple calculation to figure out. It's only a couple multiplications. Uh, normalize is just dividing a vector by the magnitude. And assuming that you're already calculating the world space position of a fragment in the vertex shader for other things, then you get all this for pretty much free. You don't have to do anything about transforming the uh, transforming the vertex normal by the uh, world matrix or anything like that in the um, in the vertex shader. You don't have to spend an extra 12 bytes per vertex attaching the normal information to each vertex. So there's a few other things you can do with um, with shader derivatives. This is probably the most common one that I can think of doing in Game Maker. Um, if you're going to do normal mapping, you can also use this to figure out the... Um, you can also use the same math to figure out not only the normal vector, but the tangent and bitangent vectors that you will want to use for use with normal mapping. Hey. And... I haven't talked about normal mapping in a video yet, but I'm sure I will eventually. And 
Uh, whenever I do that, I'll probably just do this to calculate the tangent and bitangent of a, um, of a fragment for normal mapping instead of attaching the tangent and bitangent vectors to the vertex format because it's a pain. Calculating tangents and bitangents is a pain. Uh, spending the extra 24 uh, bytes per vertex on tangent and bitangent vectors is a pain. Hey. And doing it in the shader in, um, with shader derivatives is just so much nicer if you can. But that's going to do it for me for today. I'm going to end this off here. If you want the code for this, uh, there's not many changes made since the, uh, since the last one of these videos, but I will have code for this in the GitHub repository in the video description. If you want to see more videos on the weirder things you can do in GameMaker, feel free to subscribe. I usually post about two videos a week, although that might just be one video a week for the time being until I spin up another Let's Make a Game. I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, GameMaker, Harold Gidry, Kiexi, Paul Ansi, Sindra Larson, Square Crow, The Oz, Vitro V, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to support the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.